I'm currently monitoring two storm systems that will affect the Northeast United States over the next few days. Stay tuned for the details on both storms. Good Thursday afternoon, everybody. I'm Matthew Potter, your community weatherman. So I'm going to be focusing here on the Northeast United States where we have a couple of snow threats over the next few days. One for Friday into Saturday, and then another one for early next week, which could potentially provide a significant snowfall for some. Now, before we get into that, let's first look at our current conditions and the storm for tomorrow. Now, looking over the Northeast, you see we have some pretty nice weather. Most areas are seeing some pretty good amount of sunshine. Um, and that disturbance I am going to be uh, showing you for tomorrow is currently centered over here in the Midwest. Here's a current depiction of the mid-levels overlaid with vorticity, and you see that disturbance I was talking about. And then also there's another disturbance across the Canadian Maritimes that's going to provide blocking for this system. You see right here it's an open wave, but as we head into tomorrow, that wave is actually going to close off. And as you head into the overnight hours with that blocking in place, this low is going to have nothing else to do but to exit stage right and dodge off toward the southeast. Looking at the surface map for tomorrow morning, you see there's going to be low pressure centered over Ohio with precipitation breaking out across western portions of the region. Now, heading through the day, you see that this precipitation is going to spread eastward. And by this point, there's going to be snow across much of the northern half of Pennsylvania, uh, whereas we are going to deal with some mixing issues across the Lehigh Valley and also into northern New Jersey, where it's going to be primarily rain down toward Philadelphia. Now, as we head closer into the evening hours and into the overnight, you see this precipitation is going to start to head off more toward the east into portions of New England. And it could be pretty steady in some areas um, across you know, northern New Jersey, the Poconos, southern New York, and also into Connecticut. Now, that mixing line is still going to be an issue. And as you see, we're going to deal with some mixing across uh, the, the, the coastal areas of uh, Connecticut, Long Island, and also into central New Jersey and maybe still even into southeast Pennsylvania. Now, by this point, that low pressure system that was centered over Pennsylvania is gonna transfer its energy over down here into a coastal low, and you'll continue to see this into the morning on Saturday. Now, by this point, you'll see that there is some cold air that's gonna to try to work its way into the region and uh, you know flip some areas that were getting some rain over to snow. Now, by this point, the temperatures are gonna be pretty marginal, so is this snow really going to do anything? It's, it's going to be pretty tough, especially if you're only going to be seeing temperatures in the mid-30s, especially here in southeast Pennsylvania. So any type of snow that might fall really might not be doing too much on the roadways by this point. Now the snow is going to continue to dissipate through the morning hours, and by the afternoon, much of the region is going to be pretty dry. Now there have been some late changes that I've been seeing in some of the models where they actually have the position of the upper level low a little further to the north and east. And because of that, it could actually shut off the precipitation across southeast Pennsylvania during the evening hours fairly quickly, which would actually cut down some of the accumulations of snow. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is because of this shift, there could actually be increased amounts of snowfall across portions of New York and southwestern New England. Now, here are the updated advisories that have been issued by the National Weather Service. You see here that they have now extended the winter weather advisories into southern portions of New York and into western Connecticut. And this is probably due to that later shift that I've been seeing in the modeling with that upper level low tracked a little bit further to the northeast. So we are expecting probably some additional accumulations than what you were probably expecting. So now we're going to talk about that threat for early next week. Once we have this low pressure system exiting the region on Saturday, yet another system is going to try to get into the region Sunday night. Now, by this point, much of the precipitation is going to be fairly light. However, some of the models from this forward on are depicting various things. Now, this is specifically from the European, and I'm not going to show you the totality of this because it does show some pretty hefty snowfall in portions of the Northeast. It is just one model. Now, looking at the European model, it is showing a digging trough here in the Great Lakes region and also a southern disturbance. Now, as it heads into the day on Monday, you see that it is actually going to try to merge these two disturbances and basically create an upper level low. Now, by this point, this is going to be on Thursday or on Tuesday, rather. And by this point, it is showing an upper level low across the New England coastline. Whereas the GFS is showing a trough that's going to not be digging as far to the south and also that southern disturbance is not as pronounced. And because of this, 
that southern disturbance is basically just going to get kicked offshore and it is not going to phase with this upper level low. And any kind of low pressure system that might develop would not be occurring probably until closer to Tuesday off the New England coastline. Now, just to quickly show you what some of the models are showing for the Monday to Tuesday time frame, you see that the European is much more aggressive with this low pressure system. And by the time we get into Tuesday, it actually has a low of 969 off the coast of New England with very strong winds around it. And in this case, this would actually be classified as bombogenesis, which is when a low pressure system develops very quickly with a 24 millibar uh, pressure drop in just 24 hours, which would be occurring in this case. Now, looking at the GFS, as I was saying, it is much weaker with this system and never combines the two systems. Now, because of this, it really doesn't develop any kind of low pressure system until Tuesday. And by this point, much of the heavy snow is not even going to be impacting much of the region. Now, just for kicks, let's look at the Canadian model. And you see here, it is actually much more in line with the European model. And if this is the case, Inland areas especially will have to watch out for the potential for significant accumulations of snow. As you see, the models are not very well aligned for this system for early next week, so there really is no good answer for what is going to happen, and you're definitely going to want to keep updated with this system. Thank you for joining me today, everybody. If you like this video, smash that like button, leave a comment, and please subscribe to my channel to see more weather-related content like this in the future. Thank you very much, everybody, and I'll be sure to see you soon.